So the question is, is fusion energy a part of the solution to this problem, the global challenge, you know, which I think is the existential and fundamental challenge that we face. Remember, you know, we have to build the equivalent of, you know, to do this as a, as a species um, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, 20 gigawatts a week. Now, 20 gigawatts a week is a big number, right? That means you do sort of the United States as we understand it in six months. And we have to keep doing that. This is a tremendous technical challenge, fiscal challenge, and also social, social challenge. So let me talk about um, what our idea called laser inertial fusion energy, which is build the laser inertial fusion engine. What's, what does the NIF do? The NIF turns laser light into x-rays, which drives that target, and that fusion happens, and then we get more energy out than we put in. That's kind of a nice idea. You have gain, energy gain. Doesn't break any rules of physics because you're changing mass to energy, right? And you get energy out, and now you collect that energy, and you turn it into heat, and you take that heat and run it past the heat exchanger and boil water or something like that, and make steam and turn a, turn a turbine and get a generator and get electricity, and then you plug into the wall. So you start out with the highest technology, but you always end up back you know, with James Watt, except it isn't a steam engine, it's a very fancy steam engine. So what we have to do, if we're going to do this, it was, it was we have to add something that converts that thermal energy, fusion energy to thermal energy to electricity. So you can say this concept, if you just use the NIF and put that inside the system, you could do that, and then what we do is turn laser light into electrons, and the electrons go through the wires, everybody's normal wires, it's nothing different about the infrastructure, and when you do that, you could change the world if you could pull that off. Uh, there's one problem. We have to do it not once every few hours, but you know, 10 times a second. You know, that's the uh, issue. You know, it's a little bit different from an engineering point of view than what NIF is, which is an R&D facility. 10 times a second sounds like a big number, but if you multiply by 60, that's 600 RPM. So your car is going at, you know, idling at 600 RPM, so it probably drives at 2,000 RPM. It's not a big number, but you know, some people are a little bit put off by that thought, but if you go to your copy, high-speed copy machines and stuff like that, they do that. That's not really our issue. This is how it would work. This is super slow motion. You know, we fire in a target, literally on an air gun or something like that, and the laser light hits it and we get ignition, and now we get out our fusion energy, and we have this salt blanket. Salts are good, you know, not if you have high blood pressure, but salts are good generally, because neutrons have no charge, right? So they sort of tend to go through things. They don't interact with you know, atoms too much. They just tend to go through. They have to sort of find nuclei to bash into and slow down. But with certain salts, they have sort of these absorptions, and they really slow them down quickly. So if we have about two feet thick of salt, it'll collect the neutrons, and it'll get hot, and the salt will be molten, and you know, at temperatures like 600 degrees centigrade, you know, so 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit or so. And now you have this perfect heat exchange medium. So it's a great medium for collecting them, and for collecting the neutrons, but now it's a great medium for heat exchange so you could run a generator. And that's what we do, so that's how it works. But it sort of looks like this in, in real life. And you can see the salt flowing by. It actually flows, flows pretty slowly. I just want you to know that's a gigawatt engine. So that, you know, it looks big on one scale, but this is the scale of the NIF, right? And it's a 1.4 million, just to say a gigawatt is 1.4 million horsepower, except it has no carbon. You know, you're not burning carbon, and there's no CO2. And what are you using? Water, you know, the hydrogen from water. And in fact, one liter of heavy water, so that pitcher, you know, is equivalent to two million gallons of gasoline. It's a phenomenal thought. <laughs> you know, that's why we love hydrogen. <laughs>